Hey Pioneer Track athletes and parents, this is Coach Julie. I'm in my car. It's kind of like carpool karaoke, but not. Um, and a couple things I wanted to share in a video as we are into our second week of practice and address some commonly asked questions we've had so far. So first off, I want to say that all of the coaches, um, we are really proud of your kids. We are definitely making them work. Um, we said on the first day that track and field is essentially it's a sport where the sport that you do is kind of like conditioning for a lot of other sports. Um, and so no matter why you're in track, whether it's just to be outside and be with friends, if it's to be just be conditioned, do some conditioning to help you in some other sports, um, any of those reasons are great. So we're all glad that you are here, um, athletes, and that you've been working so hard for us. So that said, because you are working so hard and we're having this really beautiful weather, it's finally warm out, a couple really important things. First important thing is hydration. Um, bring a water bottle to school, put it in your locker, make sure it's full, drink that water bottle during the school day. Ideally, I would love to see everyone drink at least two water bottles during the school day. Um, start at one if you're drinking nothing but anyways why we want you to drink water during the day and not only at practice drink at practice too is because it's getting hot it's at a hot part of day there's not really a ton of shade where we have to practice we're outside on the grass or the bus loop or the blacktop and so if you're not hydrated prior to that's going to increase your susceptibility for cramps for slight muscle tweaks and strains and for just not feeling good, like basic heat stroke kind of stuff. So we really wanna make sure during the school day, bring that water bottle, make sure your name's written on it, and then make sure you fill it up before practice. Um, and we will definitely be giving water breaks. If you really need a drink, we'll absolutely let you go. Um, but having that water bottle with you, and especially because we rotate to different parts of our practice space, having that bottle with you and you take it to each practice space is gonna be really important. The next thing that I wanted to address is related to things like stretching, warm-ups, things you can do at home, um, related to having your muscles, your body feeling better. So with track and field, as with any sport, any type of performance, sport performance, even fitness, um, the type of warm-up that we do, it's a dynamic warm-up, it's specific to running and to power types of events. That has been well accepted in the sport performance community for a long time and there's research on it as well. If you want me to send you some, I can parents, but anyways, there's a reason why we don't just static stretch, like stretching where you hold something for 30 seconds where we count out loud. That's kind of an older school method of doing things. I know a lot of people grew up with that and with large groups, it's kind of easy to manage them then, but it's just, it's not effective for preparing movers to do the activities we're gonna have them do, which is faster running or shot putting or jumping. Um, stretching, static stretching is not bad. I wanna make sure I'm very clear with that. It's just the ideal time to do that is gonna be post activity, post workout, at home, at night, afterwards. Um, static stretching incorporates um, increasing your range of motion and your flexibility. That's different than a dynamic warm-up, which is more priming the body to move um, at an advanced pace or with more power. And so when we do a dynamic warm-up, that's considered more movement prep, getting the muscles warmer, more blood flow, um, allowing the central nervous system to start to work more in the specific way we want it to move. So that's why if kids are saying, hey, we're not stretching at the beginning of practice, um, we are, it's on purpose because that is best practice to not just do static stretching. That said, I know all of you kids are middle schoolers and stretching on your own is probably not at the top of your to-do list. So we are gonna throw a little bit here and there some static stretching into our dynamic warm-up. but here's the thing, parents and kids, this is on you. At the end of practice, we will incorporate more structured static stretching in your last station, your last rotation, but at home, you need to do that. If you don't want, like quads, I know are gonna be the number one thing. If you don't want your quads to be sore, they're gonna be sore, That that's okay, that's part of training. You need to do some stretching at home, parents. You're gonna have to help them. A tool I really like to use is a foam roller. 
if any of you have one at home. Um, great tool for runners to use. It's just soft tissue myofascial release. Highly recommend it. I have one. I use it all the time. Um, I have a few from work that I will bring once we get a little more structured into our practice event groups um, where I will rotate kids through and we'll, we'll learn how to use them, but I only have nine and we have 125 kids. So um, we'll incorporate that from time being. If parents, if you have any questions about stretching or dynamic warm up, what that all entails, I have a video I'm going to send out after I post this one, after I share this one, that goes into more detail on that. And I'd be more than happy if you want to talk more about that or to share some articles and blogs and information with you on why we're doing that. But this is partly on you athletes and parents to make sure that the flexibility increase um, to increase range of motion that needs to happen outside of practice too, not just at practice. But we will spend a little bit of time on that too. We just want to make sure that you are primed to run and to move quickly. Um, static stretching just cold or by itself first is the equivalent of taking a frozen rubber band and trying to stretch it. It's not going to prepare you for the movement we have coming up later. So next, um, this week we are doing something called event sampling the first three, maybe four days of practice. Um, hopefully we'll get done with it on Wednesday. So that means we're going to be spending time, athletes will just rotate through doing what a typical practice would be like for shot put, for distance, for 400 runners, for long jump, for hurdles, um, so they can get a taste of it. Because a lot of times we think we might like to do an event, like we think hurdles might be awesome, it sounds really cool, but then once you see it and you see how high they are or maybe Maybe you realize I'm not the most coordinated kid in the world. This is not for me. That's okay. That's why we're sampling these events. Or you think that you hate distance running, you don't like the concept of it, but then when you're in the distance sample workout and you kick butt in it, maybe you might want to keep it on your radar. So that's what we plan to do. We're going to be looking at the weather. Um, I am aiming to do some time trials on Friday, maybe even a few on Thursday, depending on how things go. And time trials, you know, everyone gets nervous because it sounds like a test. And in some ways it is. When we do time trials at practice, it's very informal. We hand time, so just keep in mind, hand timing is not the most official timing out there. But it's just to give us a very basic ballpark idea of where kids are at with some of their times. That helps establish some goals for them. Um, so if say they're running a 400 meter time trial and they run it in one minute and 30 seconds. And over the season, they race the 400 in meets, and they're able to drop that time down to 120. That's a huge improvement, and so it just helps have that little bit of a gauge. And then our first meet is Wednesday, May 9th, and so having a few times on the books helps us to decide who might run where um, and just know we have four regular season meets, dual meets, where we have a lot of kids to place, and we're gonna try and get everybody to, into events that they wanna run. Of course, we wanna win those meets and do our best to score points, um, but we will do our best, and kids will get chances to get timed in the meets. That's honestly the best place places to get a time because on time trial day we have kids helping time each other and that limits the amount of accuracy that we have with times but it's just to give us a ballpark idea um, for time trials we're gonna have um, not every event so select events and depending on what kids are liking what they're wanting to do they'll sign up to do between two to three time trials over the course of the two days we do them. A big ask that I have is um, as we finalize our schedule for Thursday and Friday, if any parents um, or older siblings, younger siblings, sixth graders, if any of you are available between the time of 3.30 to 4.45 to help time, we would gladly appreciate your help. And so send me a remind text message if you're able to come out. I'll post some reminders um, and requests for that too. But that's the basics that we've got for this week. Um, some really awesome news. Our third coach, Coach Kristen, Coach K, she's done with school at Eastern. Her hiring stuff was processed at the district, so she's joining us now this week. And then we are at 125 kids on the roster, so that means we can hire a fourth coach. And Coach Diamond Wilson is joining us as soon as her paperwork is processed too. So we just got the go-ahead to uh, sign her 
hire her, I guess, as a coach yesterday for Mr. Moore. So there will be four of us. So that is awesome. We have such a big team. We're so glad so many kids came out, but four coaches makes it way easier than the two we did last week. So thank you kids for um, managing yourselves well and keeping behaviors pretty good. We know you have large groups. That's kind of the nature of track and field. It's a no cut sport. It's outside. It's in May. There's a lot of kids. We want as many kids to participate. So it just means we're going to have a lot of people at one time. I hope you have a good rest of your day and I will see all of you track athletes that practice and parents if you have any questions just shoot me a remind text. Um, that's the easiest way and if you see this video and you're not on remind for some reason um, ask your kid they will help you or you can shoot me an email. Um, the best way to get a hold of me right now is the letter J, J, two J's, um, letter A, H, N, the number two at E M I C H E M I S H dot E D U. It's my Eastern email. Have a good one. Bye.